morning to you all and greetings from me, Reverend Janet and all of us at the Peterborough Methodist Circuit of Churches. It's the 22nd of September and it's good to have you joining us for morning worship. It's good to be with you. I'm going to begin with um, some words from Psalm 34 and it's written by Jim Cotter. His version of Psalm 34 goes like this. We will bless you, O God, at all times. Your praise opening our lips. We will exalt your name alone. The afflicted will hear and be glad. We give you thanks. We magnify the name of our God. I sought your help and you answered. You freed me from all my fears. We look towards you and are radiant. Our faces shall not be ashamed. The cry of the poor reaches your ears. You saved us out of our trouble. Your angel guards and protects us bringing your deliverance near. And so we taste and see how gracious and good is our God. Amen. The cry of the poor reaches your ears. We think about that topsy-turvy world of the kingdom as we listen to our first hymn, number 186, in Singing the Faith, Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord, unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice. Let us join together in prayer. Father God, we come before you as your children, seeking your face and trusting in your loving care. 
We come to worship together, even though we may be alone. We come as your people, as your body here on earth, to praise you, to lift up your name, but also to hear again what it is that you want to say to each one of us. We come to you in a moment of quietness, remembering, Lord, that Jesus needed quiet times with you, times of prayer with you. And so we come as individuals to talk with you now. We bring with us all those things that are causing us anguish and anxiety and worry today. And we ask you to share those burdens with us and help us, Lord, to carry them through the days that lie ahead. Lord, we come to you just as we are. And we ask you to draw close to us, to make us aware that you are with us now. May your power be at work in us and around us. May your Holy Spirit work to transform us day by day into the likeness of Jesus. May we see him more clearly and love him more dearly and follow him more nearly every day. We come with our thanks, our grateful thanks for all the many blessings that we have received from you, Lord. We thank you for the changing seasons, for the changes that we see in the world around us. At this harvest time, we thank you for the food that we have on our table. We thank you for the companionship of family or friends and neighbours. And we thank you for all the ways that we see your love for us through them and their care. Lord, we come before you as sinners, knowing that we need your grace, that we need your mercy and your forgiveness. And we pray again, Lord, that that might be our experience. We ask you to forgive us for our thoughts and attitudes, for our actions and for our conversations, Lord, and for anything in our lives that has not reflected your glory, for anything that we have done or said that has not been worthy of your child. And as we ask your forgiveness, we ask you to help us to forgive all those who might have hurt us by their words, by their silence, by what they have done or by what they have not done. May we be always be people of mercy and grace to others in the same way that we ask for your mercy and grace for ourselves, Lord. We pray that you will be near to us, speak to us and bless us as we spend this time in worship today. And we pray, Lord, that you will accept the prayers of our lips and the silent prayers of our hearts. For we make them all in the name of our loving Lord, friend and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning's Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37, and I'm reading from the Living Bible. Leaving that region, they travelled through Galilee, where Jesus tried to avoid all publicity in order to spend more time with his disciples, teaching them. He would say to them, I, the Son of Mankind, I'm going to be betrayed and killed, and three days later I will return to life again. But they didn't understand, and were afraid to ask him what he meant. And so they arrived in Capernaum. 
When they were settled in the house where they were to stay, he asked them, What were you discussing out on the road? But they were ashamed to answer, for they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. He sat down and called them around him and said, Anyone wanting to be the greatest must be the least, the servant of all. Then he placed a little child among them, and taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Anyone who welcomes a little child like this in my name is welcoming me, and anyone who welcomes me is welcoming my Father who sent me. Amen. We now sing number 563 in Singing the Faith. Matt Beckingham leads us in O Jesus, I Have Promised. side nor wander from the pathway if you will be my guide oh let me feel you near me the world is ever near i see the sights that dazzle the tempting sounds i hear my foes are ever near me around me and within but jesus now draw nearer and shield my soul from sin oh let me hear you speaking in accents clear and still above the storms of passion the murmurs of self-will oh speak to reassure me to hasten or control lord speak and make me listen oh guardian of my soul oh jesus you have promised to all who follow you that where you are in glory your servant shall be too and Jesus I have promised to serve you to the end oh give me grace to follow my master and my friend oh give me grace to my master and my friend. Speak and make me listen. Sorry, what was that you said? Sorry, I wasn't listening. How many times have you asked someone what was said? Someone who's been to church on a Sunday what was said in the sermon. Someone who's been to a, a, a circuit meeting or a church council meeting and you haven't and you ask them what what did they say and you say I don't know I wasn't really listening. Children are absolutely masterful at it coming home from school and you say to them have you got PE tomorrow do you need your swimming kit what time are you going to get back from the trip? What's your homework for tonight? And the reply is nearly always, oh, I don't know. I wasn't really listening. I wonder what you didn't hear when you were at school. I wonder what important lessons you missed because you weren't listening, because you were staring out of the window or daydreaming or gossiping with the person sitting next to you. How much of your school life did you daydream away? 
wonder how many sermons you've tuned out of and missed the point that the preacher was trying to make. Perhaps you've already tuned out of this one. I don't know. What important things have you missed when you haven't been really paying attention, when you haven't been really listening? Well, the answer is that you don't know, do you? Because you weren't listening. And because you weren't listening, you weren't learning. You weren't learning what the person speaking was trying to share with you. Those disciples with Jesus, they missed some of the most important words he ever said because they weren't really listening to him. Jesus was revealing to them the deepest thoughts of his heart. The fact that he was going to be put to death and then be raised again from the tomb. Amazing, incredible, life-changing, world-changing events he was talking about. I am going to rise from the dead. And they missed it. Perhaps because they weren't really listening. Perhaps they heard what he said, but they didn't understand them. They didn't get what Jesus was talking about. Perhaps... They were still thinking about what had just happened to them. While Jesus had been up on the Mount of Transfiguration, a distraught father had turned up with his little boy and he'd asked the disciples to drive the spirit out of the troubled child and the disciples had not been able to do it. And I've no doubt they were still talking about that, arguing about it. Who had tried to heal the boy and who had failed and who should have done it and who could have done it better? Who was the best disciple? Who had the greatest gift of healing and the greatest gift of exorcism? Who was Jesus' favourites? Who had the ability? Who had the knowledge? Or perhaps they knew that Jesus had turned his face towards Jerusalem and they were on their way there and they were so excited because the big moment had come at last. While Jesus was quietly saying to them that when he got to Jerusalem he was going to be put to death. They had visions of him arriving in triumph going into the temple, taking the throne and making himself the king of kings. And so perhaps they were asking themselves, who's going to be second in command? If he's going to be king, who's going to be Prince of Wales? Time to get myself noticed. Time to get the elbows out and get to the front of the queue. Stake my claim to be the Chancellor of the Exchequer or the Vice President in this new kingdom, in this new government that Jesus says is going to come when he reaches Jerusalem. They all wanted to be the first in line when the jobs were handed out. Well, how completely they had missed the point of what Jesus was saying to them. You know, it's quite possible for us all to walk with Jesus for days and weeks for months and for years and still not get what he is saying to us. We can all find ourselves not really listening to Jesus because our own thoughts and our own agendas get in the way. We have our own concerns and our hopes and dreams and our own plans for the future. And those thoughts fill our minds and so we do not listen and we do not understand what it is that God is trying to say to us just as the disciples did not listen and did not hear and did not understand. How did Jesus respond to this not listening and not hearing among his disciples? Did he have a complete tantrum? Did he scream and shout at them and tell them they were all stupid and useless and he didn't know why he bothered with them? No, what Jesus did was 
he sat down. Now in that society and that culture, sitting down meant that you had something really important to say. In our culture, when we've got something important to say, we stand up. We stand up, we get behind a lectern, we climb up onto a platform or a stage or a pulpit and we stand over people and we speak, literally speak down to them. Now everyone listen because what I'm saying here is really important. But in Jesus' time, if you were going to say something really important, you sat down. So Jesus sat down and called his disciples to come to him and he gathered them around him. Jesus made sure that this time he had their full attention. No more talking amongst yourselves, no more bickering, no more arguing, no more staring out of the window. Come here, sit at my feet Turn your eyes upon me and open your ears and your hearts to what I am about to say. This is really important. Whoever wants to be first must place himself last of all and be the servant or the slave of all. So here we are again in this topsy-turvy world of the kingdom of heaven. In our world, the greatest are the ones who have clawed their way to the top. They've elbowed their way to the front by putting other people down and trampling all over friends and neighbours and indulged in all kinds of dirty tricks, bribery and blackmail and illegal practices. In the Roman world, where Jesus was, you got your way to the top by murdering everybody else who stood in your way. But Jesus said in the kingdom of heaven, you make your way upwards by becoming more like Jesus. You make your way to the top by taking off your coat and kneeling to wash the feet of your friends and your enemies. You move upwards in the kingdom by lowering yourself and by making yourself the last of all. You move forwards by moving backwards down the queue. And if you are great in this world, you are served by others, certainly. But if you are great in the kingdom, says Jesus, then you are the one who is doing the serving for others. If you read further on in Mark chapter 9, you will see that Jesus ends this time of teaching with words in verse 50. Live in peace with each other. Live in peace with each other. Stop fighting with each other. Stop seeking to be greater than one another. Live in in peace. Greatness in the kingdom of heaven is becoming like a little child. And that had a very different meaning back then to what it means now. What it meant then was to become of no worth, of no value, to have no status or importance. A child was disregarded. A child was of no value, of no status. Let go of all your pride and your arrogance and your natural human instinct for self-preservation, says Jesus. James, who was there, picks this theme up in his letter. He says, be lovers of peace, gentle at all times, willing to make way for others and humble yourselves before God. And then 
God who loves you and who knows the things that are truly in your heart will lift you up at the right time. Don't worry about it. Keep putting yourself at the back of the queue. Keep on loving others. Keep on being the servant of all and trust in God to deal with the final outcome. For one day God will restore everything to the way he always intended it to be. That day when the proud hearts and the stubborn wills are put to flight. That day when the hungry are fed and the humble are lifted high. That day is in God's hands, not ours. But yes, it will come because we have God's promise. These words of Jesus to us in Mark chapter 9 are nothing new to us. None of us are hearing them for the first time today. Peace, humility, gentleness, loving service, putting others first. It's the meat and drink of the gospel of Christ. Becoming a living sacrifice pouring out our lives for each other just as Jesus poured out his life for his friends and for his enemies. The question that we have to ask ourselves today in the light of what Jesus says is have we really listened to those words of Jesus? Have we concentrated? Have we really taken it in? Have we understood what it means for us in our own lives? And do we have the grace to do it? Do we have the grace to live in the way that Jesus challenges us to do? Do we have the courage to be different? Do we have the strength to make ourselves weak and helpless as a disregarded and overlooked child. Well, no, no, of course, of course we don't and of course we can't, not in our own strength. We will never have enough grace or courage and strength until we learn to ask and to seek and to knock on the door of the kingdom. We must accept that we need to be changed. We need to be transformed daily into the likeness of Christ and ask him to make that transformation in us so that day by day we grow more like Jesus. I used to love those old little prayer choruses that we just don't sing these days. There was one that went Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, listen to his words and follow his example. Let's pray. Lord, help us not to cling to what seems to be important in the eyes of the world, but help us to listen to Jesus. Help us to learn from him how to be humble, how to put ourselves last, and how to be the servant of all. Give us grace to always put others before ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession, our prayers for others, and I invite you to join me in the response that is on the screen now. Lord, as we draw near to you, help us to know you are with us. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You give us the opportunity to meet with you in the call of the poor and in the cries 
of the needy. Give us the courage to serve and to share the love that you have for all people. Teach us to be open to others, for in meeting them we meet you. Father, we give you thanks for all who have cared for us and brought us to know you and your love. We ask your blessing on all who serve as leaders in your church, for ministers and preachers and for stewards. May our churches be ready to serve the needs of our community and all the world. We pray for all who give their lives to relieve the suffering and the sorrows of your children everywhere. Lord, as we draw near to you, help us to know you are with us. As we rejoice in your goodness and grace, Lord, we remember all those who are hungry, all those who are homeless, and especially those who are homeless as a result of the hatred and the violence of humankind. We pray for refugees and stateless peoples. We remember minorities and all those who are suffering from persecution today. We ask your blessing on all those who are exploited and trafficked and those who are enslaved. We pray for those who seek justice and fairness in your name. Lord, as we draw near to you, help us to know you are with us. Lord, we give thanks to you for the love and the care that we experience day by day in our homes and in our neighbourhood. We remember how much we are served by others who love us and care for us. Lord, may we never take them for granted. We ask you to bless our homes and we ask you to bless all those homes where there is poverty, debt, hunger or abuse. We remember those people who are caring and serving day by day but receive little reward or are taken for granted. Lord, as we draw near to you, help us to know you are with us. Lord, we remember all those who do not have the basic needs of life. We ask your blessing upon all who are ill. And Lord, we just take a moment now to name before you those who we know are struggling with their health and their well-being today. Lord, as we draw near to you, help us to know you are with us. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost. Grant that we may learn to be generous and gracious. Help 
help us to serve others as Jesus served us. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final piece of music today, we are led by Graham Kendrick singing his own well-known hymn, This is Our God, the Servant King, singing the faith number 272, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe.
So let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him. We pray our blessing. May the God of goodness journey with us through this day. May the God of wisdom and understanding inspire us. May the God of tenderness and compassion fill our hearts with holy love. May the God of blessings watch over all of our comings and our goings today and every day. Amen. I pray that God will be with you to bless you and guide you in the days that lie ahead. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Goodbye. God bless.